So for the rest of this presentation, I would like you to think of me as a rather unpleasant looking cat who is merely mouthing the words dictated by his master, especially if you don't like them. Okay, so preliminary. Independent studies show that on average, 43% of time in these discussions is spent arguing about how to pronounce 20022. So for the purposes of this discussion, I'm just gonna say ISO, and you can mentally complete it with your preferred pronunciation. Ready? ISO. See, that was easy, wasn't it? And that's gonna save us 17 minutes right there. Anyway, let's go. So what's the problem? Modal loop is currently being excluded from consideration for use in proposed payment switches. And the reason for that is that one of the requirements for the proposal is that ISO messaging, there you go, you see, is to be used. And Mojo Loop, as we know, has a, a rather excellent, but nevertheless proprietary message format. So what are we gonna do about this? Well, there are two answers in this presentation. As we know, the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. So we start from the question, what can we do most quickly? And then we ask the question, what can we do best? So first of all, let's think about the core of the problem. So ISO is, and I quote from the ISO site, a modeling methodology, do da do da, notice XML and ASN1. Um, but the key to this is it's syntax independent that bit that I've highlighted there. And syntax, as we all know, of course, are the rules about combining things. Now, ISO, as ISO itself says, is syntax agnostic. It doesn't care how messages get combined. But Mojoloop, as we've said before in this uh, convening, is syntactically organized. It matters that things happen in sequence and that things are passed between elements in the sequence. So, some of the material that belongs to the syntactic organization is contained in the messages. And that's really the problem that we want to address in this presentation. So first up, where can we start? That's not at all dirty, of course. Initially, we want to do something with minimum changes to code and where changes are required, we would rather change the periphery than the core. Now there are some in issues that we need to think about first of all. Transaction type definition, um, identifier types, the quotation, and the two-phase commit. I'll talk a little bit about each of these, but first I want to talk about a interesting little get out of jail free card, which uh, ISO provides. And that is the business application header. Now, the ISO community defined this and essentially said it's something that could be attached to any business message. So a business message of any kind can have a business application header attached to it. And it gathers in one place uh, a relatively small amount of data about the message and it gives some examples there. So one of our quick and easy ways of winning, we think, is to use the business application header. I'll be talking a bit about how we'll do that a little bit further on. So, first of all, transaction type definition. Mojoloop defines the transaction type by a combination of three or four different kinds of uh, variable. And even those aren't sufficient for completely distinguishing things that some schemes want to distinguish. So our solution to this is gonna be, we replace it with a single category identifier, and that will be an enumeration, which eventually we would hope to see incorporated into the ISO definition. So that's how we're gonna deal with that. Second, identifier types. Now, ISO really doesn't like uh, anything that doesn't have an IBAN as the identifier. Fortunately, although IBAN, as we know, stands for uh, International Bank Account Number, um, it doesn't have to be a bank account. Now, it's based around the BIC, uh, which used to mean bank identification code, but now just means business identification code. So any organization can apply for a BIC. And that means that mobile money systems, MFIs and things like that can apply for BICs. And there are rules in each jurisdiction for how to construct an IBAN number from a given BIC. Uh, so what we imagine is that in the future, 
it will be possible for uh, participants of all kinds in motion group schemes to use IBAN numbers, or at least to have them about their persons. And we will put in a rule for processing that says the payer DFSP should always use the identifier type returned by the payee. And as long as that's an IBAN number within the meaning of the act, then that's sort of fine. So where's the quotation then? That's a, again, a notorious problem is that uh, because of the way in which the orchestration of a modular loop transfer is structured, the quotation is a very important part. First of all, it's where the terms are agreed. Second of all, it's where the, um, the cryptographic lock is applied to those terms to ensure that they can't be changed subsequently. So our plan for this is we will define a document type in the business application header. And one of the other things that the business application header has is a related document field, which means that you can include a history of the documents on which a given document depends. So we can enforce orchestration by insisting that that history field is filled in by DFSPs or by whoever fills it in, uh, and that it can be evaluated by the switch. Finally, there's a two-phase commit, the commitment for, sorry, the condition fulfillment pair that we've talked about a number of times uh, in talking about how uh, transfers work in Mojoloop. With that, we will, pardon me, we will possibly use the signature field in the business application header, possibly move the condition and fulfillment to the header rather than to the body of the message because ISO doesn't make any uh, statements about what should go in the header. So that will be another possibility. So we leave that question open for the moment. So what would need to change? Uh, you see here in front of your eyes the uh, Mojo Loop architecture diagram, and I'm just going to point out what we think would need to change for this to work. So first of all, we are expecting an FSP backend to produce ISO messages, and the message content would be defined by the scheme, by the scheme rules. That wouldn't necessarily be true. It might be that uh, particular forms of uh, DFSP would need to, or would be interested in producing other kinds of messages, but we can convert those as they go through. And I'll explain how that will happen. I mean, one of the drawbacks, generally speaking, of ISO is that it's very much bank-centered. Uh, and one of the things that we want to do, as you know, is to include lots of different kinds of institutions. So we're gonna to have to make sure that if we do have, uh, motor loop schemes that use ISO, then we will also have to have good ways for organizations that may not be quite as used to using ISO to get involved and to engage productively with those things. Okay, so that's number one. Next up, we use the scheme adapter over here to manage the business application header. So we can ask the scheme adapter to add a business application header to the message that it transmits to the hub. Um, and that means that the information that's coming through can have the additional fields added to it that the hub needs in order to process it properly without putting that requirement directly on the FSP, which may not be uh, ready to or may not find it easy to provide it. Third, we have a preparation process in the transfer prepare stage, which converts the ISO message into native Mojo speak. Uh, we do a conversion process anyway, so the idea is we will just change that to, um, to get a Mojo Loop message out of an ISO message. But we will also pass a copy of the original ISO message as well, so that when the message is passed across to the recipient, it's the original ISO message, it's not reconstituted, rehydrated, nothing's happened to it, and the, um, the J, sorry, the JWS signing, the non-reputability signing will still be effective and will still work. And then finally, the notification process forwards the original message. So after step three, we have a native Mojo Loop message which can be processed in exactly the same way as it is now. So all of the stuff inside the central service, quoting service, all of those aspects of the system won't need to be changed at all in order for this process to work. 
And we think that's all we would need to do in order to generate a working uh, ISO compliant uh, version of Mojo Loop, at least ISO compliant, if that means consuming ISO messages. Because again, sometimes people say an ISO compliant system is one that can consume and emit ISO compliant messages. Sometimes it means something that uses ISO messages all the way down, which this clearly doesn't. So where does that leave us? Well, we now have a way of getting real world experience of how Mojo Loop and ISO can or should work together because we've got means of producing ISO compliant Mojo Loop schemes that we can use in labs, uh, in hackathons, in um, uh, you know, all sorts of environments. Second, we can feed that experience back into the ISO real-time payments group which is a group which amazingly enough is studying how to extend ISO to real-time payments. Uh, ISO has, I suppose, its base really in faster payments. Uh, and it's still, I think, trying to get its head around all of the different things that will need to happen in order for it to really deal with real-time payments in the sense that people in this audience would understand them. Second, we can use it as input to an ISO business justification for the changes that we think are needed to equip ISO for a world it doesn't yet know about, the real-time payments world. Now, one of the things that the process for, <coughs> pardon me, for changes to uh, the ISO specification require is a business justification. And obviously the more material we can get and the more detail we can go into about why these changes are needed, the more convincing it's likely to be and therefore the more likely to be accepted. Our objective really is to have Mojaloop as the accepted standard <coughs> for orchestrating RTRP systems that use ISO messages. And finally, we can work on the Mojaloop changes that will be required for a thoroughgoing ISO system whatever the message content is. So if we thought, well, I've got these slides the wrong way around. Bit of blue sky thinking now. This is about our message agnostic Mojo Loop. So if we thought of a Mojo Loop implementation as service-based, and I'm talking now about the switch, what services would it provide? It goes back to something we were talking about earlier in the week. Well, there's orchestration, identity resolution, security management, liquidity management, system of record, those two are very closely tied up with each other, and settlement. So which of these do we think depend on knowing what the format of a message is? Well, orchestration doesn't. The identity resolution doesn't. Um, security management, mostly not but possibly we might make an exception to condition fulfillment. And that's because either security management works on the whole message, or if in the case of non-repudiability, uh, it works on the header. And as we've know, that isn't anything to do with the ISO message. So we don't have to worry about that. So it's really just the last three, the quiddity management, the system of record and settlement. So for liquidity management, we need to obtain the pr proposed transfer amount to test. And for the last two, we need to convert message content to the content in which it will eventually be stored in the ledgers as input to the system of record and eventually to settlement. So if we imagined a message agnostic Mojo Loop architecture, we would say the first three are independent of message format. We don't need to really to change them at all. For liquidity management, I need to be able to abstract the amount from wherever it is in the post transfers message. For settlement management, I need to construct the system of record information associated with a post transfers message. For the fulfillment check, I need to be able to find the fulfillment, uh, sorry, the condition. And for reporting, I just need to be able to extract that information and convert it into some form that uh, I like for my reporting database. So for system of record extraction, I just take a message, whatever format it's in, and derive a set of Mojo Loop standard ledger entries from it. 
Uh, this could include the condition because we'll need that later. Uh, and all the subsequent operations could work off those standard ledger entries and therefore be message independent. And we can manage scheme specific operations via the rules architecture. So if we look at the existing Mojaloop process for a transfer request there and for a transfer response, which of those would really require message specific components? Well, obviously the request itself would, the format check would, the error response would, the system of record check and the forward to payee. Actually, that doesn't really because it just forwards whatever there is to forward. So it's probably a point of view that says that really isn't uh, dependent on message type. On the response, Update transaction probably isn't um, message dependent because the status is derived from the endpoint. If you get it to the ordinary endpoint, then you know it's successful. If you get it to the error endpoint, then you know it's unsuccessful. But apart from that, there are mostly uh, things that have to be uh, done. Uh, sorry, fulfillment check. No, don't think so. Anyway, sorry. So. The tasks for creating a new Mojo Loop scheme, let's imagine that we decided to invent our own message content for a Mojo Loop scheme. What would we need to do that was different? Well, we need to create a system of record rule. We'd need to modify the swagger definition, obviously to support the message formats we invented. We'd need to configure the error message formats, create a rule to obtain the fulfillment and create a reporting process. So the question I want to ask is, in the context of implementing a whole scheme, is that a big overhead? Obviously we can support standard out of the box message types. And the simple version of this does require that all participants should use the same message scheme. We could support multiple format schemes in principle, but that would need additional conversion and, fun and um, checking functionality, because in that case, the switch would be the guarantor that the translation was correct and that the recipient of the, of the message, translated message, could be confident that it was the same message that they had originally uh, obtained, or sorry, that had originally been sent by the uh, sender of the message, despite the fact that it was in a different format. And that's it. Awesome. Um, thank you so much, Michael. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, I'm going to ask you, uh, I'm going to move to a break here real quick um, for three minutes. Um, there are a couple of questions in the chat there, Michael, if you want to respond to them, that would be... Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, well, actually, I will probably won't do that right at the moment since I am, uh, through a magnificent feat of organization, going to be presenting again in three minutes' time. Well, actually, I'm, I'm going to be sitting in the back seat while, uh, while Moses is driving. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to queue up one thing, though, for you to think about in, as we can take it up when we have time, which is the difference between a message switch and a clearing and settlement system. Mojo Loop mm -hmm. does both things often. Yep. Uh, the hub will often switch quotation messages, but it does not switch money. It clears it. And so yep. the system of record actually takes into account two different very important things. One of them is a command to clear. And then, of course, the final outcome is recorded as the system of record records it. But those mm -hmm. two things are actually somewhat different. And so I make the point that in forwarding an ISO message from one side to the other, that's really a meaningless operation on the clearing side. Um, yeah, it is absolutely. It's, it's important, obviously, for them to exchange messages during quotation that they both understand. And we could argue there that maybe even there you want to do some kind of message translation. I'm not sure. Uh, the whole point of, of ISO was that everybody speaks the same language. That was their architectural given, but turns out not to be the case. So we either give in and say, okay, then we'll speak your language too during quotation. However, we're gonna use a very specific form for clearing and settling, which includes conditions and fulfillments and notifications, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, and so I think that's something we need to balance as we think about the ISO mapping work is, you know, we're, uh, how, how do those things fit together, those two very divergent needs? Sure. Okay, I will uh, put that on my list of things to think about when I've uh, finished sitting in the back seat telling Moses how to drive. <laughs> um, thanks so much. Um, I